So when we're looking uh, forward thinking in the future of photography, uh, especially in the likes of, uh, in this case, boudoir photography, um, there's got to be a massive incentive in the um, option that will become a normal, I'm sure, with generative fill of the future and how we can basically either quickly adapt perhaps our own images to combine those together in a much quicker blending. Um, or in this case, kind of just kind of looking at an image, um, shooting it in a small studio space and then kind of actually putting in those generative fill. Uh, can you do this, please, as it were? Uh, I mean, the image in front in front of us now, uh, besides for the girl on the bed, is completely uh, generated through generative fill. Of course, it's really not good enough in its qualities yet, and commercially we're not allowed to use it at present, as we're still in beta, of course. Uh, but when we kind of look at the um, the original shot, you know, um, this is just a behind-the-scenes shot, um, but I just thought we'd use that uh, as a kind of a... Uh, uh, an example of how you know photographers will be able to actually shoot in quite you know uh, unset up locations and then possibly offer the clientele a, a much more different kind of look and feel um, the only problem of course with generative fill especially if there's no option to use our own images in a no in 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 an easy way uh, we're going to actually have to kind of just guess as we're going along unless uh, generative fill in the future will allow us to kind of uh, put in specific um, words that will actually then associate themselves with a parameter perhaps that will allow us to actually recall that same setup so we can actually sell it as a series of images and things really. Um, so if um, you haven't begun to actually play around with generative fill yet, um, the first thing that we're doing, remember it's in beta mode. Um, if I just quickly select around um, the client here, and really what we're trying to do is what you, we can be as loose as we want. So we could include as much or as little of the bed. Um, but what we're trying to do is actually change the background, of course. So as photographers, I would still implore you, please, 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 to make sure that if generative fill takes o over the planet, which I'm sure it's going to in some way, um, but basically, we still maintain that expression, that beautiful light, light in the animation, the pose, and everything else. Don't get into the habit of use, what I used to hear in the early noughties um, of, of Photoshop, you know, 2000 to 2005, oh, we'll just fix it in Photoshop. That should not be what you're doing. You should spend all your time where possible generating the image, I believe, in camera. Uh, and then from there, if you need enhancements, if you need to correct things, then that's a different thing altogether. But of course, in generative fill here, once I've made my selection, I just go in and I select and inverse this selection. Now, of course, it's looking around the whole image. By clicking into the contextual fill bar here and the generative fill, um, sorry, it's called the contextual contextual taskbar or whatever okay um, but if I just go in here and type in hotel bedroom um, we're gonna get a certain look remember there are some um, prompts that you put in um, that Photoshop is going to completely uh, reject so if you are trying to put bra on we've shown you that in the past and as far as um, uh, uh, kind of pants is concerned trying to actually change it. it it's kind of worried that you're going to try and remove people's clothing or replace it with uh, a, a skin or whatever it would be so it's that's good for us but you can see in here the scaling is completely off um, within the actual uh, image and things now whereas this is the closest one so this is a kind of a save whereas these other two images are basically no good so I may as well click on the three dots and delete those anyway and then of course to give me a few alternatives um, I can then basically just hit the generate again as long as I'm on this same one I can hit the generate hotel bedroom once more and basically it's going to look at uh, what we want to actually uh, create and things really. So we could put in uh, some more description perhaps and we might get a different kind of look. So the good the good news is it's keeping to the white bed, which is good. Um, again, once more, it's, it's better in scale, but she looks wrong in the position and so on with it. So we're still back to that kind of first image looks the best. Second is not bad. 
third is basically usable but she just looks too small so i would just delete that as well uh, and then basically um we've got kind of three ish images that we could use here now you can let's just do hotel bedroom uh, dark or at night um it, so i don't need the word not, uh, at i just need the word night yes so let's see um, what it's going to actually kind of create. Now, of course, we could do glass windows, cityscape scene. Remember, at present with the beta, we are creating low resolution. The only way to actually have a higher resolution uh, element is to basically, once we've kind of found the one that we like, is can we then uh, generate uh, um, a, a better quality uh, kind of image. So first things first, they've produced an extra leg here. Yes, so we want to get rid of that. So if this was an image that we said, this is the one that we want to use, it's a super king bed, etc. Um, then what we've got to do is just select around that area of the photograph quite loosely again. And then this case, we just hit the generate and, and you don't need to actually put a description in there. So that is going to try and fix stuff. So couple of skill sets, uh, whatever type of photography that you're going to be doing, is one, a description or prompt to actually put things in the scene. You might want to add in mirrors or cityscape or whatever it would be. Uh, and then the other one is going to be blank, where basically you're just fixing stuff. So if I now went in and I selected um, the kind of the windows down here, and then this would be generative, so this would be window, night, city. So it might work, it might not work. We might have to actually put in window first, and that might be the first stage, and then we might have to make the selections within the window to create it. But as, as you can see, it's done a job, but um, we'd have to regenerate it time and time again to make it really worthwhile. So as far as the future of um, generative fill and boudoir is concerned, we obviously, we've got to think now how possibly we're going to be uh, using it this time next year or in two years' time or three years' time. I would still encourage you to practice with the beta, and it, it is a full working model. The, the only difference being, of course, commercially we're not allowed to use it, as I said, um, but it is low resolution as well. And, and the only real way to go into a resolution, so if you click on your rectangular marquee tool, and in the style, you move it from normal to a fixed size. And you basically set this as a 1024, 1024. Uh, then basically select the areas that we want to affect. And in that case, we're going to do the uh, generative from here. So that is going to then do its job. But that's the only way that, uh, as far as I'm aware, that you can actually make the scene a little bit more higher quality as such if we were to actually zoom in there, but we've all obviously got a problem going on. So as far as the um, generative fill is concerned, it's, def it's definitely going to be a friend for the boudoir photographer. It's going to open up some great ideas, especially if we're kind of thinking about how can we take our boudoir photography to another kind of look and feel more dynamic. Um, but uh, nothing's going to beat you creating your own setting, your own studio space or hiring a hotel room or the likes of to create great images. But we've got to embrace the future.